We've always tried to focus on creating a 3D printer capable of providing high precision and user-friendly experience. Here, it debuts to the new beast, CR6SE. The Creality CR6SE. It's an attempt to catch up to the big boys and to finally have something that's not going to be labeled as, you know, just another budget 3D printer. But here's the thing, uh, the Ender 3 v 2 is their actual budget 3D printer and it is actually doing a much better job at just about everything that the CR6 SE tries to do. It's more reliable, it prints better, it looks like a more professional machine, it comes a third cheaper and it's a printer you can buy right now without having to deal with the entire crowdfunding or pre-ordering thing you're doing with the CR6 SE. Let me explain. Right after I explain today's sponsor, JLC PCB. They're my personal choice when I need to order prototype PCBs for their great quality and pricing. You can get five PCBs for $2 plus shipping, but they don't just offer bare PCBs. You can also directly order stencils or even fully populated prototypes of your designs and get them delivered right to your doorstep. Check out JLC PCB at the link below. Okay, let me start with the controversy that was the launch of the CR6 SE. This is a printer that was launched on Kickstarter by Creality, a company that has boasted about selling half a million printers in a single month just early this year. Out of all the companies that would need crowdfunding to launch a product as basic as the CR6 SE, I wouldn't really think of Creality. Now, Sure, it's not what I would call in the spirit of crowdfunding for a well-established company to essentially pre-sell a 3D printer there. And while they surely don't need the pre-order money to actually start production of the CR6 SE, there's nothing like legally wrong with it. Kickstarter are happily taking their cut of your pledges, Creality get hyped for the new product. You know, it's, it's good marketing. And when people pledge almost four and a half million US dollars on the campaign, I think that shows that it was absolutely the right thing to do. Of course, the fact that the Kickstarter pre-orders then weren't exactly shipped on time, and people who had bought the CR6 SE after the Kickstarter actually got the machines earlier than backers, well, that one doesn't sit quite right. But that's over, and today I want to actually compare the CR6 SE to the Ender 3 V2, which has had a completely normal launch, you know, by just appearing in stores one day. Both of these printers have some drastic improvements over arguably Creality's most popular machine, the original Ender 3, which we'll get to in a second. But really the only two noteworthy bonus features on the CR6 SE um, over the Ender 3 V2 are auto bed leveling and a filament sensor. Like actually that, that's it. Sure, there are a few smaller details, but these two are the only ones that I think make a real difference. Both now have this uh, screen printed glass bed that does stick and release really well, but it is quite easy to scratch. Supposedly this is crabarundum glass, so silicone carbide, which is normally used as an abrasive powder. And the only place I can imagine they're using silicone carbide is the coating, not in the glass itself. Both use trinamic stepper drivers, so the motors are silky smooth, but the fans they use, for example, on the tool head, uh, is still very noticeable. So I wouldn't call either one of these a silent printer. Both have 4.3 inch color LCD screens. It's a touchscreen on the CR6 SE and a regular click wheel style screen on the Ender 3 V2. Both options are very efficient for actually using the printer. Uh, the menus are logical. The only complaint I'd have is that when you're standing in front of the printer, uh, the LCD's poor viewing angles are just at that weird point where the shades of gray on the screen completely blend together and you can't actually see anymore what you're selecting. But overall, they're good, they're usable, and both run a modified version of Marlin on a custom 32-bit board. The firmware they ship with isn't completely glitch-free. For example, because of the way they're implementing the power failure detection and print resume feature by writing to the SD card on every new layer, phase mode, where you have a smooth spiral contour, doesn't really work on these printers because the SD card and the processor just get overwhelmed by constantly writing the new Z height to the card. Apparently, this is addressed in a new firmware release already, but I feel like they should have caught it before actually shipping these machines. The interface on the screen, though, uh, isn't totally identical. 
For example, the Ender 3 v2 shows the remaining time during a print, the CR6 SE does not, and it looks like the entire menu structure on the CR6 SE is just a bunch of JPEGs they're showing you, and they've actually got some pretty intense compression artifacts on some of the pages. It doesn't make a difference in usability, but it looks, you know, it looks cheap. For the main event, print quality. The Ender 3 v2 hands down prints better. I'm using Creality Slicer here, the official recommended software, uh, which comes with a profile for both of these printers, but really it's just a version of Cura that has a new splash screen and Ultimaker search and replaced by Creality, which is fine, really, and the new Cura is an excellent choice as a slicer. The print profile you get for each of these printers is tuned very conservatively, aka slow, as are the acceleration settings on the printers themselves. I actually do prefer that versus a printer being pushed too far and then compromising on print quality or reliability, but it also means that the dynamic loads on the printer's motion systems are so low that things like the, uh, the brand name Gates belt that the CR6SE uses make practically no difference. Then the 3V2 has basically flawless print quality. Cooling is good, retracts work well, detail reproduction is excellent, surfaces are smooth, and so far it's been perfectly reliable for me. On the other hand, the CR6 SE has been giving me some issues. There are a lot more fine fuzzies on the prints, as well as some apparently larger air extruded bits, and it also looks like the extruder is actually randomly losing steps. Whenever I tried to print Armel the Polar Paladin, he lost a leg, because the CR6 SE radically under extruded on one of the layers. Uh, on the second one, there's also a sudden change in like surface finish halfway up the print right here, and a whole bunch of gaps throughout the entire model. Same print on the Ender 3 V2, just about perfect. Same filament, same everything. Looking at the hardware and overall construction, the prints from these two machines should be pretty much identical, but they are not. The hardened setup is also practically the same between these two, so you can print the same materials on both, it is a Teflon lined hardened, which of course is easier to manufacture, but does limit print temperatures to anywhere between 240 and 260 degrees, depending on how close you want to fly to the sun. The CR6 SE, however, does have a larger tool head overall because it's also home to its auto leveling sensor, and I think this is actually a really cool construction. Instead of being rigidly mounted to the carriage, the hardened sits on a little steel strip that has a load cell applied to it, basically turning it into a little digital scale that can sense when the nozzle touches down onto the print bed. That arm can flex up just the slightest bit and the load cell will actually detect that tiny amount of deformation in the metal. So what you get is theoretically a perfectly accurate and repeatable measurement of where the nozzle is relative to the bed height, because it's literally the nozzle itself probing the bed. There's still an offset you can adjust in the firmware, but that should be something you just have to set once and can then forget about because the measurement will actually compensate for things like, you know, nozzle wear or even when you install a slightly longer or shorter nozzle. So the other unique feature is the filament sensor. And while this one may be useful in practice, especially to use up those last little bits no one wants to use at the end of a spool, just the way that it's mounted with the most awkward amount of space between the sensor and extruder, where it's enough space for the filament to curl and always miss the inlet on the extruder, but too little space to fit a westerner's fingers in there and guide it into the hole. Sure, a little filament guide for this spot is a super easy upgrade print, but come on Creality, you could have done that better. And just a note on that, because it always comes up in the comments, I can only test machines the way they are provided by the manufacturer. I'm not going to be doing any mods or tuning or anything like that for a review. The thing is, once you start modifying something as complex as a 3D printer, you're really easily getting into that region where it's not a Creality CR6 anymore, but it's Tom's interpretation of a Creality CR6 SE. If you replace a sufficient amount of components, you can turn any 3D printer into the perfect machine. Or heck, you can even turn a pile of aluminum profiles into a really good 3D printer with a bit of effort. But, you know, what I can judge is only what the manufacturer delivers, not what you or me can turn it into. And the CR6 SE is actually the machine that could use a bit of modding in general. The ribbon cable that's going to the extruder looks like you know, it's in need of some support um, to keep it from breaking after a few spools of filament. And between the extruder issues I've already talked about and the problems that other users have reported, like the main power switch giving them problems, or in the case of Joel, the 3D printing nerd. 
No joke, I, I plugged in a USB cord, or at least I went to plug in a USB cord and there were sparks. It sparked. I was scared. I jumped back, I powered cycled the printer, and this is where it sits. It will not get past that screen, and it's dead. This doesn't feel like a very finished or polished printer. And also the general look and feel is actually a lot better on the cheaper in the 3v2. Sure, you don't get the fancy custom aluminum extrusions, but the screen it looks a lot cleaner with you know the matte bezel instead of this you know faux glossy plastic sticker on the Sear 6 SC. And the Ender 3v2 also skips the randomly placed you know speed holes on the X ends and the transformer style decor on the various injection molded plastic parts. You know the Ender 3v2 just looks and feels so much cleaner, even though it's basically the same machine. So my recommendation, in case it's not clear already, skip the CR6 to see and just get an Ender 3v2 instead. Then buy yourself some nice filament from the money you just saved. But wait Tom, I thought you were a Prusa shill, why aren't you recommending the Prusa Mini instead? Well, the thing is, sure. The Prusa machines are still a bit of a nicer package overall, you know, the manuals and documentation is better and having a full set of materials and profiles to choose from in the slicer instead of just a single PLA profile sure is nice, but Creality are catching up really fast. The Ender 3v2 feels like an entirely different machine compared to the original Ender 3 and honestly even with no mods I would personally be totally fine with using the Ender 3v2 as my only 3D printer. They have now managed to cross that point where it's not quite perfect yet, but definitely more than good enough. As for the Sear 6 SE, I don't see how the extra $135 premium actually gives you any more value, and especially with the issues that's having, which the Ender 3v2 is not having, you should probably either skip this one and wait for a Sear 6 SE v2, or just grab the Ender 3v2 now. And that's my take on these two machines. I hope you found it helpful. If you have either of these machines yourself, let me know in the comments below what your experience has been so far. And as always, thanks for watching, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one.